Good morning. I'm Faye Thompson. This morning I have my grandson, Kent Thompson from Little Rock. It's my son's son. And he's going to do a video of some chicken for us. First of all, he's going to show you how to marinate these. So this is a recipe that I have stolen from a restaurant in Wynn, and it was my favorite chicken recipe. And I asked the guy who owned the restaurant for years how he made his grilled chicken. And he'd never tell me until I went to college. When I went to college, he finally told me what was in it. And he's like, Kent, all it's in that's tiger sauce. So that's all it is. So I use these um, thin sliced chicken breasts. Um, they're little cutlets. If you can't find these, you can get the regular chicken breasts and cut them in half. But this saves you a lot of work. This is called a tiger sauce? This is try me tiger sauce. Yeah, it's, how about that? Dump the chicken in the bag and pour the marinade in. This ain't rocket science. All right, now we're going to add the tiger sauce. This is one of my kitchen toys. It'll open different size jars, and since I've gotten older, I don't have the strength in my hand. Of course, Ken, he's strong. He can do that without it. But I love this thing. Any older women that have trouble opening jars, you need to buy you one of these. There we I got the it. tiger sauce. You can smell, it smells good, doesn't it? You smell the bottle. Does. The tiger sauce smells real good. But it's not, it's not too spicy either. So next we're gonna put it in the fridge and I usually like to marinate it about 24 hours. The cook who um, told me about this recipe, he said he lets it marinate for four days. I'm not sure how kosher that is, but you know, 24 hours is usually pretty good. So we're gonna be grilling the chicken on my PK grill that I've brought into town. They actually make these in Little Rock and they are cast aluminum. So they're supposed to last a pretty long time. This was my parents old grill and I've, replaced the grates and cleaned it up a little bit, but it's what I use to tailgate with. So it's kind of my portable grill. So we are gonna start by adding some charcoal. With my egg, I use lump charcoal, but this is, you can use briquettes in this, but I just have lump charcoal is why I'm using lump. And I'm gonna use these little starters Usually I use a chimney starter, but we didn't have that, so we're going to see if this works. Most of the time when I cook at home, when I cook at my parents' house, we use the green egg because that's what we use, but so all we have, all we had available right now is lump charcoal, which I actually like. It burns cleaner, burns hotter, but um, you don't have to have that for the PK grill. The big green egg's ceramic, so it if you ever put lighter fluid or anything with lighter fluid in it, auger food tastes like lighter fluid, but this you don't have to worry about since it's metal. So I'm gonna let this get started and then we'll add our chicken. So the good thing about the PK grill is it's sort of oblong shape, so you can put all your charcoal on one side and have kind of a hot zone and a cool zone when you're cooking. It also has grates on each side so you can control the direction of the flame. If you wanna put the charcoal on this side, you can close the grates on one side and make all of the smoke go through that. It's really good if you're smoking a pork butt or something. Um, this one I've actually modified a little bit and added a temperature gauge to one side. Well, now we're outside and now that the grill has been preheated, we're going to Spray some Pam on the grates and add our chicken. Are you going to cook it on direct heat or are you going to cook it on the end down there? I'm going to cook it on the direct heat to begin with and then when I put my cheese on top, I'm going to put it on this side so oh, it doesn't burn. Okay. Okay. So this is my favorite part. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I always like a flamethrower. <laughs> Good things come to those who wait, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, now we're going to close it up and let it go for probably about three to five minutes. Some of these bigger pieces, they really? take a little longer. It cooks that quick? On one, we're going to flip it. I'm going to clean my tongs, though. Yeah. So when we get done grilling the chicken, I like to add pepper jack cheese to the top. This is some boar's head jalapeno pepper jack cheese, but any chip pepper jack cheese slice works. I like to get these on a plate so I can quickly add them to the 
grill because sometimes these little pieces of paper get fussy. I need to tell you something about this platter. This platter is made in Arkansas by... It's called Miller's Mud. A company made in Dumas, Arkansas, and they make some of the prettiest dishes. Let me have one of those. I'm going to eat one of them. I love pepper jack tea. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> That's really good. Mm -hmm. Are you timing this? Yeah, sort of. I don't really go by time. I'm going to knock it over because it's on the. Oh, there we go. I'll take care of this. I'm going to see where oh, we're at. Looks delicious. Yeah. I think some of those are getting. I'm just wondering if it's going to get down that length of time, though. I, had, I don't really look at time. I look at temperature. So I have a my thermometer over there to make sure it's. Oh, okay. Everything's cooked right. Yeah, see, some of these off the what heat. What does that need to be about 165 when 100, you get finished? Yeah, 100. When you get done, about 160. It'll get up to 165. Whoa. I like this cheese. Seems like that's better than last pepper jack, I thought. Like some of these over here towards the end, they're gonna, since I got all my heat over there, it's gonna take a little while to get all those cooked. Okay, we just have to wait now. Yeah. Let me check on my chicken, see how we're doing here. This big one, I'm worried about getting a little too burned, so I'll move him over here. Mm -hmm. Hmm. They look good. Because they are good. I don't think I've ever had this before. This is another one of our weekly rotations, so let it go a little longer. Getting ready, aren't they? Yeah, they're getting there. That's why we have these. It's good to have this grill with multiple areas of heat, so you can kind of move the. Yeah. I like that little grill. Where'd you get it? They make these in Little Rock. This was Jane and Kenny's old grill. She got an egg and she gave this one to me. The only way I can tell when stuff's done is if I check it with the temp. So these big pieces are about 130. Let's see what we're at over here. 148, 151. So this this little piece is done. So I'm going to move it. Let me get the platter over here. And let me see a piece of yeah. So I'll add the the cheese to the pieces that are done. I add the cheese at about 155 and then it comes up to temp, so. All right, I think we're good to go. Right. Get the I think I can get it. Okay. Uh, Ken has finished his bre uh, chicken breast now and it was marinated in uh, tiger sauce. And they ended up putting pepper jack cheese on it. And he got it to a degree of about 165, is that right? Yes, ma'am. And I made hot biscuits, and we're going to go in and have a biscuit chicken sandwich. <laughs> I appreciate you watching our family video today, and I sure have enjoyed having Kent with me. And join us again on another family video. Thank you.